Good morning. I'm Pastor Amanda, and it is always my delight to welcome us into this time and space of worship where we get to draw nearer to God and each other. And welcome to all our online worshipers. May this be a time for you to draw very near to God wherever you are. There are announcements, as usual, as we have a little housekeeping. You can take a look at those in the insert to your bulletin, though I have one announcement on Thursday, because of the conflict with Linda Reed's memorial service, the slow and easy Bible study is not going to meet. So just didn't want to uh, leave anybody with conflicting information. So thank you, uh, Virginia, for that, that catch. Uh, of course, you I've just mentioned Linda Reed's memorial service is this Thursday, and so hope that you can come and, and help us celebrate her life if you're available on that day. Always appreciate it when you have the chance to fill out that yellow connect card. Just helps us know that you've been here, and particularly if you have any prayer requests. It is so good that we are such a praying church. So whatever need you have, large or small, feel free to share that. And it can go out on the prayer chain uh, unless you request that it not. I think... Those are all my bits of housekeeping. I will mention, I guess, about next Sunday's worship. It is going to be just a little bit different. I don't know how many of you remember last year when I did a special State of the Church address, but it was separate from worship. I'm, it's time for the State of the Church address again, but I'm going to do it in worship instead of having a sermon. And so that's what's going to happen next Sunday morning. And we're going to follow it with a little bonus fellowship, a few extra treats and time to hang out together between worship and discipleship. So just wanted to kind of mention that so you weren't caught unawares. And with that, let us continue worshiping, drawing nearer to God as we enjoy our prelude. Would you please stand as able for the call to worship?
Come, now is the time to worship. When the Israelites wandered in the wilderness, God provided manna and quail. God provides in unexpected ways. Jesus tells a story of vineyard workers, some who work all day and some who work mere hours. Yet the generous landlord paid paid all of them equally. God provides in unexpected ways. God does provide in unexpected ways. Yet manna, quail, and grapes need gathering and harvesting. We respond to God's provision by gathering and harvesting all that God provides. Come, now is the time to worship. We come to worship and partner with God who provides for the long haul. Our hymn of praise is Jesus, the very thought of thee, page 175 in the red hymnal. responsibly in our prayer of confession. Lord, many laborers are unpaid. They have to pay back their debts. Money lenders are exploiting them. They are in debt, and they are leading a debt-driven life. Lord, we confess that we never shared our resources with these and for their Lord, We believe that you are here to provide daily bread to all of us, but the masters of this world are not interested in the bread of their laborers. Lord, we confess that on many occasions we sided with masters of this world and accepted their labor. God of justice, may you pardon our sins and lead us in the life path of justice, peace, and the grace of God.
And now is the time in our worship service when we take a few extra moments to be a little more quiet in the presence of God so that what is on our hearts and what is on our minds can be lifted to God in prayer. It's an intercessory time when you might want to just make God a little extra aware of those situations that you're mindful of that you would sure love a little extra the Holy Spirit coming to pay attention. Let us pray. God of life, God of laughter, God of tears, God of everything. We come as your people today with all sorts of stuff going on in our lives and knowledge of all sorts of things going on in our world. But still we come faithful, hopeful, and so grateful to be able to gather in worship to be able to connect with our brothers and sisters in Christ, to hear around us, even in this place, signs of new life. Lord, may we always embrace the beautiful sounds of the children among us. May we always be excited for the presence of young people in our church. May we always be grateful for the elders those with great hard-fought wisdom who help us on our way. Lord, we are the church. We are a little bit of everything all in one place. We are in different phases of our lives, yet we are one in Christ Jesus, our Lord. How beautiful that is. And so, Lord, we pray in that beautiful unity in the way that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now is when I invite my small friends to come forward and join me for the children's message. So good to see my friends this morning. I gotta have a room. Can I, where, where do I sit? I sit right here? Okay, woo! Okay. Ooh. It's a slower and slower journey down into that position. You have a cute pink purse. I love shiny pink things. I love it, love it. Well, friends, we've been talking about how to encourage and be excited for one another for the last couple of Sundays. Oh, oh. And so a couple of weeks ago, we talked about being encouraging, and last week we talked about giving compliments, and today I wanted to talk about congratulating folks. Now, do I have any readers up here today? Can you read that? Uh-huh, what do you think? Okay. <laughs> hey, I do have a reader up here, I know. Can you tell us? Congratulations. Yes, congratulations. Give someone good wishes when something special or pleasant has happened to them. Thank you. <laughs> See, if you come up for the children's message, you get called on. <laughs> Yes, you can hold it for now. Can you, can you show the people the paper? Show the people out there the paper. There, yeah, that's good. Good job. <laughs> because when somebody does something pleasant or something good has happened to them, or 
graduations, girl, you just know things. I'm, I'm not kidding. Yes, there's a great job sticker on there, and you could tell that was a happy thing, right? So if you graduate, a lot of people will tell you congratulations. If you, you know, play a good game of some sports, people will often tell you congratulations or good job. Let's see. What other kind of things can we congratulate people? What are some other pleasant things that happen? Uh, if you study hard and do your best on like a test at school or something, you might get congratulations. Yeah, especially if you get an A plus, you get congratulations for sure. I'm sorry, what'd you say, Foster? Cleaning up, yes. Anytime my kids clean up, they absolutely get congratulations. Good job. Or a sticker, that's one way to show congratulations. That's exactly right. And <gasps> at your library, when you clean up, you get stickers. I think that's an excellent system. Yeah. At the library, you can get new books, right? Even big ones. Woo! And you know, yeah, there is one great compliment that I hope to re receive when I meet Jesus, and it is this, well done, good and faithful servant. Someday, I hope that, in the love, that I've lived a life of big love in Jesus Christ, and that when I meet him in eternity, I get to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And... <laughs> I'm not sure that has anything to do with congratulations. We're getting a little off topic now. So I'm just going to wrap us up with a word of prayer. All right? Let's pray. God of all good things, thank you so much for the ways that we can grow and learn and make all kinds of different accomplishments and achievements, some of them seemingly small and some of them a little bigger at times. But thank you that we can do those things and that we have people around us who will congratulate us and just spur us on to more love and good deeds. In Jesus' name, amen. You have cute shoes on, right? Were you showing me your shoes? Do they make you run fast? Yeah? I bet all your shoes make you run fast. Yeah, that's pretty much true, right? All right. Well, I love you all, and you are welcome to return to your grown-ups. And I love you all, and I invite you to stand as you're able to sing our next song. seated.
Would you please join me in our offering prayer? God of endless patience, we know that the sound of our complaining is not the music that pleases your ears. We complain about the food that is under or overcooked, and you hear the stomachs that have no food. We whine about the bed being too soft, and you see instead those whose bed is the sidewalk or the floor of a cell. May the offering we bring today be an act of praise that drowns out the noise of our complaining. May it find its way to bring comfort to your children who have little or nothing. And when that happens, may it be joy for your eyes and ears. In Christ we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from Paul's letter to the churches at Philippi, chapter 1, verses 21 to 30. 
Because for me, living serves Christ and dying is even better. If I continue to live in this world, I get results from my work, but I don't know what I prefer. I'm torn between the two because I want to leave this life and be with Christ, which is far better. However, it's more important for me to stay in this world for your sake. I'm sure of this. I will stay alive and remain with all of you to help you progress and the joy of your faith and to increase your pride in Christ Jesus through my presence when I visit you again. Most important, live together in a manner worthy of Christ's gospel. Do this whether I come and see you or I'm absent and just hear about you. Do this so that you stand firm, united in one spirit and mind as you struggle together to remain faithful to the gospel. That way you won't be afraid of anything your enemies do. Your faithfulness and courage are a sign of their coming destruction and your salvation, which is from God. God has generously granted you the privilege not only in believing in Christ, but also in suffering for Christ's sake. You are having the same struggle that you saw me face and now hear that I'm still facing. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now there's a lot going on in that text. Uh, Much of Paul's writing we take as instructional, but really this text today isn't so much instruction as Paul really just being a man pouring out his heart in service to the Lord. And I don't know how it's hitting you specifically right now as you've just heard it, but as I was preparing for this sermon, I could just feel, kind of in my gut and in my bones, Paul writing this to the Philippians. And really, as I stand here this morning, I can still feel it in my heart, in my gut, and in the super tense muscles of my upper back and neck. Yeah, some of you can, you know what I'm saying. And I feel it in my chest whenever I sigh at another injustice or another natural disaster. I feel Paul's heavy heart as he has had a front row seat for so many people's pain and foolishness. Quite frankly, I've sat in the front row of plenty of painful life performances as well. And as I feel Paul's writing through the lens of, honestly, some of my experiences, I also remember scripture and what it testifies that Paul has gone through. I mean, friends, Paul has learned things. He is certainly uh, has a lot of head knowledge, a lot of that pharisaical law and those kinds of things. He's a very learned man. And Paul has done things. He is a key character in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And friends, Paul has seen things, and he's felt things. So he's been educated, been an aggressive oppressor, been blinded, been healed, been beaten, been basically dead, and then prayed back to life, Acts 14, 19, and 20, for those of you who are curious. Paul has been arrested more than once, imprisoned more than once, ultimately imprisoned in a house arrest situation, and Paul has been doing his darndest to show others the way of Christ as best he can in person and through his written correspondence. And friends, I think Paul is tired at this point as he writes these words. The struggle bus is full of faithful people doing their darndest to live in the way of love, the way of the gospel, And I think Paul is our driver. Life wasn't just a lot for someone like Paul who occupies a place of prominence due to his writings in the Bible. Life is a lot for everyone. I believe this of all people. Persevering in love is good and right and righteous, but this choice to persevere in love is truly the vehicle we choose to travel in for our life's journey. The reality of struggle is that mostly life stuff is out of our control and causes struggle. But riding the struggle bus together and doing our best to stay kind is, I think, a pretty beautiful image of being the church together. That's why I chose, for those of you who don't like to repeat just the same verses over and over 
My apologies. But I needed us today. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I will be a living sanctuary for you. Part of the reason we sing these songs of faith, these hymns, is so that some good stuff gets embedded in us. It's one of those vehicles. You know, that's why we sing the ABCs, too. But it helps convey some of those beautiful realities. I mean, the struggles of life are all kinds of things. It's the literal potholes in the road, too much rain or not enough. It's advocating for yourself and or your loved ones in a complicated and evil-infused medical system. It's the existential dread of becoming aware of the evils in the world and feeling completely unable to effect any change for the better. It's those pull to open tabs on resealable packages that do not ever open right on the first try, nor do they reseal as promised. Right? I mean, so, I know some of that got deep, but sometimes the struggle is just real. Amen. I love it. I love an amen. And in the midst of a real life, I hear verse 21, actually in my head, I hear it in the translation of my upbringing, which was most often the NIV, the New International Version. I hear that verse 21, to live is Christ and to die is gain. To live is Christ. To live is love. To live is to ride the struggle bus next to some other lovely folks and spurring one another on to love and good deeds. To live is Christ. And to live is to be gentle with yourself. To live is to celebrate what is good and grieve what is gone. To live is to learn and laugh and sometimes fall down and get back up again. And to die is gain. Now that's going to be a tough one for us, I think, in our hearts. Our heads will probably nod in agreement. Yes, pastor, we know that eternity with Christ Jesus our Lord is going to be joy and love and good and streets of gold and no more tears. But our hearts, what do we actually feel about that phrase? And to die is gain. I think... Some of us worshiping together here online will feel what Paul is saying and what I'm going to be getting at. Because I think at this point in his life, Paul has made peace with death through his faith in Christ Jesus. His faith tells him that this life is rich and that continuing to spread the good news of the kingdom of God is a good thing, is is good works, and it's going to yield some good stuff. His faith journey has also led him to a place where he can think of death without fear and, in his reality, even with a peaceful longing. And I am not trying to be morbid, friends. And if I really had to boil down what I feel Paul is saying to to us through his heartfelt words, is maybe that, that death is not the enemy that we think it is or that we've been told it is. Pondering a good life should include what we would also consider a good death. Because as Christians, I think we can agree that death is not our enemy, that death is simply a fact. And we can fear that fact or we can deny that fact, but it remains a fact. It's a fact in Jesus' own life and death because Jesus died. He did not cheat death or defeat the death moment, but was raised to new life as the first fruits of what is to come. His resurrection absolutely told us that we need not fear the grave, but it did not tell us that we could avoid it. And for me, I find that really meaningful. The more I consider death as a fact and not a negotiation, the more I find my own self freed to live truly in joyful obedience. As good United Methodists, you might recognize that phrase from our communion liturgy. And so what if a successful life is simply a life well-lived, 
a life of humility and love, a life of generosity and kindness, a life of self-responsibility and community care, a life of gratitude and grace, a life of holiness. And what if the gain of death is finally getting off that struggle bus? It would be, it's been some time since I've offered anointing, and so as we think about riding this struggle bus together, I don't have any good answers, you know, about any of this stuff. I think, I, if you've come listening for, for answers, I think you figured out I ask you more questions than I give you uh, firm answers, but that's because I'm still on the journey too. But whilst I don't have an answer, you know, to the big things of life and death, I do have anointing balm. I do have a big faith in the power of the Holy Spirit to just be with us in however we need the Holy Spirit to be with us. And so today's anointing balm of choice is oil of gladness, lily of the valley. So just in case that is meaningful to you, um, I don't know why, but I have all, like I have different scents for different times of year. We've got frankincense and myrrh at Christmas. I've, you know, got some different stuff. So lily of the valleys just seemed appropriate for today. And so as, as a response to the word proclaimed, I would invite you to be prayerful right where you are. At home, I can't reach out and anoint you, but if you have some Crisco or you have some olive oil or something like that, please feel free to just a little dab will do you, but just get a little dab and feel free to anoint yourself in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. God is ever present. It doesn't have to just be the pastor, but know that I want that presence for you. And so Maureen is going to play us some just background music gently uh, while we have this time. So again, the altar is open. You may certainly pray where you are, but if you would like a simple blessing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, then I invite you to come forward. I'll be down here at ground level.
And now I would love for you to stand as you are able and sing together our hymn of response, Take My Life and Let It Be. go now to be a sanctuary, to be those filled with the indwelling of God so that the world might enjoy the love and the care and the kindness that you carry. Go in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. 